Good morning, everybody. Rob with Land Shapes Construction and Inspections by Rob. Ask Rob to be home savvy on YouTube. Hey, everybody. Uh, day after the big pour, uh, we did a little bit of time lapse photography to capture uh, what we did yesterday, but we now have a completed and poured ICF basement. Want to take you around and show you some of the details about what goes into an ICF along with the pouring and things like that. Uh, just walking up here onto the top of the wall. Um, every year or every pour that I do, I take my inaugural walk around the top of the basement. So this is kind of what I'm doing this morning. But as I do this, I want you guys to uh, check out some of the details on a poured wall for an ICF. It's similar to a poured concrete wall. Uh, not much different than that, other than the, the insulation and the forms themselves are part of the system that we have installed. So as you can see, uh, we still have scaffolding and all of the bracing up uh, for installing and pouring the basement. Uh, before we pour these, uh, we install string lines around the actual building itself. Um, those string lines help us as we align the walls. Um, and when I say align the walls, we actually tip them in and out uh, in a straight line. So as you look down the wall, you can see our string line um, and how everything has kind of moved in and out. Uh, door openings, uh, still have some cleanup details to do from it. Um, we've installed all of the anchor bolts uh, and things like that. Uh, short walls, we don't usually put scaffolding up on them. Uh, we install what we call strong back, which is a two by four cleated to the outside with another two by four, making a strong back T almost in essence, uh, with some kickers and some pins, very similar to just a poured wall. Again, you know, this is a poured wall system. So uh, with that, um, we did a lot of preparation uh, before we actually poured. Um, and all of those details are what makes the simplicity of installation of this system so nice. Uh, we install penetrations to the outside. Uh, some of those are for electric, sewer, water, you know, different utilities coming into the house and the building for what's here. Now today, uh, we have to do what we call the reverse process um, of taking everything apart uh, from where we finish just before we pour. Um, that being small details of removing all the string lines, all the boards, all of the uh, pieces of wood and stuff like that uh, that are installed around the inside. Uh, we have to remove all of the bracing from all of our window uh, bucks for the openings. Uh, we have all of the prepped up beam pockets where we're actually going to place our structural steel or wood, whatever the case may be that you have. As I said, I'm kind of walking you around the, the top of this poured wall system. This was poured yesterday morning. Uh, total pour was 103 yards. Uh, we had to order extra for the concrete pump. So back out probably two yards for what was left in the pump. As you can see, the walls are all nice and straight and set. Um, it got a little cold here last night, but because the concrete is in an insulated form, you have that insulation factor that the concrete can cure without having to be covered up. Now, if it was snowing, raining, and some crazy weather before it actually had a chance to set and finish off, we probably would have covered the walls. Now, um, on the outside of the wall, uh, we try to, before we actually pour this, install a waterproofing membrane, which is part of the ICS system when it goes in. Um, that helps waterproof the exterior of the home. It doesn't make it waterproof. It's a waterproof thing. So it helps prevent water penetration into the house. So if you've installed your backfill properly um, and drainage system the way it's supposed to work, it'll help remove or abate 
for a better term, uh, any of the water that could come into the foundation. So again, before we actually had installed the footer drains around the outside with large round stone, that round stone uh, is very important for good drainage. Uh, I know a lot of places I've been into, you'll find a uh, fractured limestone um, or a smaller uh, gravel that interlocks itself and doesn't drain very well. So we make sure that we put a round stone in there for good drainage. As you can see, the basement's pretty good sized uh, inside of there. We still have some details to finish up before we can actually add our structural steel to this. We will top this off with a sill plate and then we can go ahead and start building up as normal construction. Uh, the beauty of this product <coughs> is you have the ability, if you wanted to, you could continue this all the way up to the very top of the house um, and integrate it into a lot of other systems. So there's lots of flexibility of what you have available for you. Now you can see on the inside, uh, we have installed some plywood. Uh, those are on, uh, we call them either common joints or areas of added stress uh, where we could have potential movement when it pours. So we need to brace it because uh, again, you know, with anything that's uh, being poured with that much concrete has a lot of force as it moves in and around those corners. And we kind of want to retain that as much as possible. Um, we corner brace our corners of the basement um, so that we can have certain areas in check. Uh, those areas become our points of a known level and square point to work with. And that allows us to put in a nice square and straight building on certain set points and then we can square and level from that. So here's to another beautiful sunny day in upstate New York. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Good morning everybody. Rob with Landshapes Construction and Inspections by Rob. Ask Rob to be home savvy on YouTube. Hey, check us out there. We are day after the big pour. We have poured the ICF basement. Here is the final product of what we have. I'd like to take you around the Enigra, well, good day, everybody. It's Rob with Landshapes Construction and Inspections by Rob. Ask Rob to be home savvy. Check us out there on YouTube. Day after the big pour, 103 yards poured into an ICF basement. Take a look. We're very proud of the work that we do and install. Big shout out to the guys that were involved yesterday. Uh, big thanks to Robinson Concrete for the pump services and concrete that we installed into the system. Thanks to my guys, Austin, Gio, and my brother, John. Uh, they were great in helping us pour this wall system. On my walk around the top of the basement, this is post pour. After we finish, I usually take a initial walk around the basement wall, all the way around the top, just to kind of give it a quick walk around inspection the day after to make sure that uh, I'm happy with all the final details. Want to show you a lot of these details that we did in prepping for the pour, because now that it's poured, I can actually show you a lot of the final details and why we do them and install them. Give you a little bit of explanation, maybe a little bit of a long video here, because there's lots of information to relay. So keep watching, I'll walk you through the details. Uh, when we pour, these basements. Uh, today's going to be the reverse of everything that we did. We're going to do a little bit of a time-lapse photography to show the disassembly of the system bracing that we've installed. That being all of the wall turnbuckles, the scaffolding boards, string lines, temporary plywood that we put around the inside, and things like that. So this will be an empty space when we are done today and the trailers will be hopefully full of stuff. We've got three trailers for bracing and lumber and all of that stuff. There is a lot of bits and pieces that go into this. It is definitely at times very labor intense, but very pleased with our pour for what we had. Now, as you can see, we've put in penetrations into the wall from 
before we poured. That way we have ease of installing some of our utilities, utilities being sewer, water, gas, electric, etc. things like that. We have blocks around the top of the walls from our string lines that we have to remove. Uh, the string lines that we installed around this are for helping us align the walls when we pour. Uh, an ICF system has certain tendencies that it likes to do when you pour that. And one of it is, is as it settles, it will tip out as you pour it. So we tip a lot of the bracing in at mid span on the wall to allow us to have the ease of tipping them back out. It's easier to tip this out than it is to pull it back in just because that's the nature of the bracing and how it works. Uh, so just something that we've done over time and it helps us with those details. Now you can see around the outside of this, there is a waterproofing. That waterproofing comes in a rolled sheet. It is a membrane. And when I say waterproofing, it doesn't make it waterproof. It's part of a system that when you install properly with good drainage material, backing, footer drains, leading in back into that other product that we installed, the Forma drain, uh, that kind of helps make a great drainage system. Uh, we installed large round stone into the basement for great drainage. That is also part of an uh, internal or integrated system that we install on these ones here. Just wanna let you take a look down the wall there. That's a 60 foot run wall, nice and straight. That's what that string line kind of helps us to do. And that's what all of this bracing is. Now it is after the pour, so we're day one post pour. Uh, went very uneventful for us. Um, things that you always uh, hope that don't happen are blowouts and walls and things like that. Um, if you take the time to brace them up properly uh, and take plenty of precautions, you can have a very successful pour and not have a blowout. But um, we don't consider blowouts anything really major anymore because we've done this for so long. We have to remove all the bracing from the window openings and things like that. Now, the things that you cannot see in the wall are all of the rebar. Uh, this basement and garage took about 9,000 feet of rebar to install into it. Again, 102 yards of concrete went into the wall system. Uh, we ordered 103. We lose a yard when we have uh, the pump set up uh, and stuff like that. So you have to kind of figure in for a little bit of waste, but overall, a great pour, very, very, very successful. Again, a large shout out to Robinson Concrete for good pumping services and concrete. That was very timely and well put together. No hiccups in any of that. Same with the concrete delivery. Uh, two and a half hours for us to pour 103 yards of concrete into the wall system. And again, shout out to the guys. Thanks. Thanks for watching. Check it in again.